Hi guys, I welcome you guys all back to my channel. And today we are doing another mass record and we are starting with an unexpected recording. And this is my fresh thoughts on A Dream So Dark by Ella McKinney. So I've decided that my reviews or my thoughts on books are just going to be raw, uncensored reviews because I have lots of thoughts and I've decided the best way to do this is kind of record them like right after I finish. I finished this book like two hours ago, so I figured now would be the perfect time to dive into this. So for those who don't know, this is the second book in the Nightverse series. The first one is A Blade So Black and it is a... Alice in Wonderland reimagined set in what they call urban fantasy. I don't call I don't call books with black characters urban because they don't call white characters in fantasy books in fantasy books like this any other special name other than fantasy. So like I said, this is a fantasy about a black girl named Alice who is actually a dreamwalker who kills nightmares, which are fears manifested into monsters. And so it took a turn for the super worst. Oh, preface. This review is also gonna have spoilers. Not as many. I'm gonna do my best not to have them. But for the sake of fully reviewing this book, I'm not good at not doing spoilers. So I'm just letting you know. Um, so the second book focuses on what happens after the first book. So after the first book, Chess is gone. Everybody's freaking out. The Black Knight has come in and set it off. Everything's wrong. But the number one thing that I can say I loved about this book was Alice's super black mama. Like she was such a black woman um, that I know you done lost your minds and little girl, I'm gonna tell you again, all of that. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is so great. Like clearly, clearly the black woman that wrote this book wrote something about her mother in these stories. And like even Alice's responses to things were like, this this black girl responses it was great so let's see Alice ends up like all crap hits the fan with the number one being her mama her mama is is livid Alice has not told her her secret everything is just falling apart they've got to figure out what happened to chess what's the black knight who is my lady like everything is just jumping off and the one thing that still bothers me is the weird power dynamic relationship between Addison and Alice. So you guys remember if you if you read the first book that like they eventually like kiss or whatever. And that was just weird for me, especially since Chess was right there. Like dude, your age right there. Hatter is so old, I don't even think pedophilia is a name to use to describe how old he is because I feel like even in even in like regular terms, his age would still put him like adult. Whereas Alice was only 16 and 17 years old, clearly having some kind of savior complex thing with him. And I don't like it. I don't like the fact that their relationship is even a thing in that regard. I hate it. It was something that was re-emphasized in this. And the whole time, because I was listening to it via audiobook, I was like, nah, nah. like, ugh. How is this not considered a pedophilia-esque relationship? Like, I know that time is different in Wonderland, but I feel like he's past the adolescent stage in Wonderland, so how is this not a pedophilia relationship? But yeah. Also, something that I found interesting in this book is the um, diverse sexuality situations going on, where it seemed like, I don't even know how to put that, like, everybody is bisexual, I think. Well, Alice had a, and how how did how did you go? What is her name? Oh my gosh, that's another thing. The the other Nightwalkers. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I need to find Haruka. So like Alice has feelings for Chess, Addison, and Haruka. Haruka is this Asian chick that I feel like also is like addressing the whole over sexualization of Asian women and because of like animes and mangas and stuff like that so in a weird way it was kind of like so a chick is kind of doing it too like what does that mean um also like another thing that was just weird to me um uh, well not weird I, the best part about the second book and I don't think that the second book falls into the whole 
oh, like this is just building you up for the big thing. Because I honestly felt like this book ended in a way that a third book isn't really needed, if that makes sense. Like there was so, this book kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time that I was reading it. There was never a chance for Alice to just kind of sit and like nothing happened. Every time you thought that this was going to be like a quiet moment in Alice's life, things popped off. Reflections, she was having hallucinations. It was all types of stuff. So when the book did end, the book to me ended in such a way that I was satisfied with the ending. There were some questions left over, but... Like, I, I know why there's going to be a third book with the way that this book ended. And I will not discuss the ending just because I'm being nice. But in a way, it's like, wow, you've kind of closed off a lot of the, like, all of the questions that I had in book one or at the end of book one were completely answered in book two. And then even the epilogue did not leave me in a place where I was asking more questions. I'm sure later on after I've had time to sit and think about the book, because like I said, I just finished reading it two hours ago, I'll probably have more questions. But for now, it's just kind of like, okay, I mean, I think the next book is like a crown so dark or something. I don't know. Hold on. Let's see. So the next the third book in the series is called A Crown So Cursed, which again, I'm interested. I just don't know where they're going to take off because like everybody is so happy right now. Well, kind of happy. Like I feel like Chess and uh, the Black Knight have some things they got to work through, but like everyone else seems like they're in a good place. So I don't know where the story is going. I will say I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. Obviously, it's going to be on one of my reading lists of 2020. Uh, so I'll definitely be buying it. It's just, I don't know. I like L.L. McKinney. I like her presence. Even on Twitter, she's lit. So it's just one of those books that I genuinely like to support. Like I said, the main thing that I hate is the weird pyrodynamic relationship abuse uh, that is between Alice and Hatter. Um, I loved Anastasia who is known as the Duchess and are the twin boys. They were in the first book as well. Um, they're the other Dreamwalkers, but they're on the Eastern. They're on the Eastern gate. So they're the Russian. Then Haruka and Romy are the Northern gate. I don't know where they're, I don't know what their gate is considered because Hatta and Addison are the Western. Oh no. Anastasia and the twins are North. And then Romy, Haruka are on the east. So I'm like, is there a south gate? Like, are we going to meet another set of dreamwalkers? Because I do like, I liked that um, Alice wasn't the only one. I like the story. I like the connection between the veil protectors. Um, I love the story. I love that this time, like we didn't get a lot of story about why things are the way that they are in the first book, but I felt like for this one, they dove deeper because they dove deeper into the relationships between the people involved in what happened um, with the Black Queen. So for me, I was like, yes, this is great. Um, again, like I said, I could have very much done without that weird love relationship. I know, I know somebody's gonna write in there, but you hate love in general. Yes, sis, I do hate love in general. Um, but this one is just so awkward to me. And then it's so awkward to me. It's also awkward to her because she's got feelings for other people. She gets butterflies in her stomach from multiple people, but she's choosing to just like stay with Hatta. And I'm like, but Haruka, Chess, girl, you got options. What you doing going after this old alien dude? I don't even know how to describe it. It just... Sends a bad taste in my mouth, to be honest. But yeah, those are my first initial like holy crap thoughts on A Dream So Black. If you are A Dream So Dark, if you guys like these kind of videos, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next time, guys, bye.